Hello and welcome you nine to the final lesson in the plant unit. Today we're looking at the question, what is glucose used for in the plant? So again, as always, at the top of your page, please can you make sure you've got your driving question. And the keywords for today's lesson are glucose, photosynthesis, carbohydrate, starch, respiration, endothermic, exothermic, source, sink, palisade, mesophyll, insoluble and lipid. So many of these keywords we have been using um, over the previous lessons. Carbohydrate um, means a type of sugar. Uh, so all sugars are carbohydrates. Um, respiration is a, a another chemical reaction that happens inside uh, the cells of living organisms. Um, you will have come across that before, especially in the um, cells topic. Um, source and sink are linked to the movement of sugars through the plant, through the phloem. They move from the source to the sinks. Insoluble means it does not dissolve. Um, lipids is fats and oils. We'll go through all of these um, keywords when we get to them. Right. Almost every ecosystem and animal, including humans, depends on plants for energy. By understanding how plants work, we can improve the yield of crops and help protect our environment. That is why we are learning about plants. Right, your start of today's lesson is what is the word and symbol equation for photosynthesis? Where is glucose made? And how is glucose transported around the plant? Pause the video. When you come back, we'll go through some answers. Okay, word and symbol equation. Uh, this is a chemical reaction, the reactant on the left, an arrow representing the reaction, and the product, what is produced afterwards, on the right. Water plus carbon dioxide are the reactants. They make glucose especially, and oxygen as a byproduct. The symbol equation is 6 H2Os plus 6 CO2s make a glucose molecule, C6H12O6, and 6 oxygens. Okay, where is glucose made? Hopefully, lots of you will have um, uh, remembered that glucose is made from photosynthesis and it is, happens in the chloroplasts of the plant cells. This especially happens in the leaves as the leaves are the organs designed for photosynthesis in the plant and uh, it is the chloroplasts inside the palisade cells inside the leaves. But, you know, give yourself a tick if you, if you said inside cells. It is a chemical reaction. How is glucose transported around the plant? Well, this is what we looked at last lesson. We looked at the xylem and the phloem, and the phloem is designed for translocation. This is the movement of um, sugars and um, amino acids through the plant. It can happen in both directions, and it goes from source to sink. Now, some of you will remember the source is where the sugars are made, so the leaves, and the sinks would be to where it's stored or used perhaps, so perhaps down um, down to the roots where um, there might be tubers, something like a potato where it will store the sugar. Okay, today's lesson, as you might have guessed from the um, driving question, is we're looking at glucose and what happens to the glucose after it's been made, and, and so, which is why it's important that we know how it's also transported around. Right. Glucose is made in the leaves by photosynthesis. We're happy with this. Carbon dioxide is used up, water is used up, and glucose is made. Oxygen is also made as a byproduct. Key thing to, to remember though is that glucose is the reason for photosynthesis. But more specifically, where does it happen? And actually it happens inside the chloroplasts. Okay, so again this is a this is a um this is a diagram representing a leaf, a, a, a section of a leaf, as if we had chopped it and we were looking inside. Uh, you've got the palisade mesophyll layer, which is on the inside. If you're not sure, um, perhaps go go back look at lesson one. That's when we um, that's when we learn about the the cells inside the leaf. The palisade cells are specially designed for photosynthesis, and inside them, oh, apologies about this poor quality photograph, um, but the the green dots inside, those are the chloroplasts, the specialised organelles for photosynthesis. Okay, and um, 
this is a commonly uh this, this question is commonly got wrong uh there's a lot of misconceptions going around with plants and, and photosynthesis and um when i ask this question sometimes people ask oh plants make oxygen the reason plants um do photosynthesis or the reason plants are there is for us to make oxygen okay and actually this is a misconception they do not care about us <laughs> um please do not write the reason plants do photosynthesis is to make oxygen oxygen is completely a byproduct although um plants do use oxygen for respiration which we'll talk about in a minute um the point of photosynthesis is entirely this stuff glucose glucose is the most simple sugar and then it can glucoses together and make more complicated carbohydrates more complicated sugars like sucrose which is um like what the sugar is that you might like the sugar that you get straight from plants but sucrose um and all the other carbohydrates that's the reason plants do photosynthesis okay glucose is a store of chemical energy but it's also a chemical in its own right it can be used in making of other larger molecules for structure or storage and this is the focus of today's lesson is how is glucose used in the plant right before we carry on i'd like you to read the read all of these boxes and decide which one suits uh, the answer to this question the best what is the point of photosynthesis pause the video have a think okay welcome back the answer is A, to make sugar, of course. It is the point of photosynthesis is to make glucose. Right, um, there are five uses for photosynthesis. We're gonna go through them one by one, give you a bit of a summary, and I'll, then I'll test to see whether you can remember those. Um, the first use of photosynthesis, uh, sorry, the first use of glucose from photosynthesis is to use the glucose for respiration. Okay, respiration is another chemical reaction that occurs in the cells, but not in the chloroplasts. This time it happens in the mitochondria. Uh, lots of you will recognise the word respiration. Um, I want you to completely think, uh, forget about breathing, because although we sometimes call the breathing system the respiratory system, respiration itself is a chemical reaction. Um, the point of respiration is to get energy from the glucose molecule and unlike photosynthesis this is an exothermic reaction which means instead of needing energy to work it actually gives out energy you might notice it is the opposite way round to photosynthesis so this time it requires glucose and oxygen and it makes water and carbon dioxide Plants are not the only living things that do respiration. In fact, respiration is the R in Mrs. Nerg or Mrs. Gren. Okay, um, all living things do respiration, and they do that to get energy, and they get the energy from their food because their food contains glucose. You see, so hand in hand, respiration and photosynthesis are probably the most important chemical reactions of all. Um, they're opposites to each other, and plants use their glucose they make to get their energy back when they need it. Very, very clever. Okay, the second use. Um, now, these aren't in any particular order. But the second use is storage as starch. We have come across this one before, so hopefully it's not too difficult to remember. Um, glucose dissolves in water but starch is what we call insoluble, okay? Insoluble means it does not dissolve, it doesn't form a solution. So this makes a better store of carbohydrates. So um, you get big long chains of glucose molecules. When it gets long enough, they, they will not dissolve, and that is what starch is. Starch is made from many glucose molecules joined together, and you can test it with iodine, you might remember. Okay, so it's a good store of glucose, and we know glucose is a is useful for energy. Another way that glucose is stored is as lipids. Now, I'm sure most of you know that plants can have oils and fats in them. Oils and fats are lipids. Lipids 
or lipid is the name uh, it kind of encompasses both fats and oils okay so fats and oils are lipids and it is a store of glucose okay again they are insoluble and so they are good stores of energy they're often found in seeds more than in um well i suppose you, you there are there are cases where you've got uh, fats inside plants so um the photograph down here you've got avocados which are particularly fatty nuts and seeds contain loads of oils and if you were to grind them up and um and, and squeeze them out you might get oil out of them now oil again is just fats but as a liquid really and that that's a lipid i've put a little cross on the salmon because that's an animal okay so nuts and seeds are full of fats and oils those fats and oils are called lipids and they are a store that or or that is how glucose can be stored so that's the third one so i mentioned before that glu uh, that glucose is a molecule in its own right and actually um it can be joined together as into a larger carbohydrate as cellulose it is used for making cell walls some of you will recognize that plants have got cell walls but um, animal cells don't and the fact that plant cells have cell walls means that they've got structure um, it keeps them rigid i suppose keeps them upright the cellulose comes from glucose and therefore cellulose is actually a carbohydrate weird thought plants are made of sugar except this kind of sugar we can't digest very well <coughs> right and the final one is for making proteins Okay, proteins are made from amino acids. Lots of us will know this. This will be drummed into you in uh, in other units as well. Proteins are made from amino acids. So lots of amino acids joined together make a peptide. Peptides in a um, specific shape, all joined up like that, it would be a protein. Okay. Now amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, can be made with glucose and nitrates are two ingredients needed to make amino acids so the glucose from photosynthesis i don't know why i've written from respiration that should be from photosynthesis amino acids um, can be made from glucose mixed with nitrates now nitrates were one of the um uh one of the things that the root hair cells will absorb so using products from the leaves the glucose and products from the roots the nitrates they can make amino acids so that's the final use of glucose so quick summary glucose is a simple sugar it is a most simple type of carbohydrate glucose can be used for respiration which is a chemical reaction that occurs in the mitochondria of cells for energy many glucose molecules can be joined together to make starch which is an insoluble storage of carbohydrates it can be used to make lipids which is a storage found in seeds many glucose molecules can be added together to make cellulose for building and with nitrates can be used to make amino acids which are which are the building blocks of proteins okay so now this is the point of the lesson where i would normally ask you to turn to your partner and try to tell them the answer uh, to this question by saying an answer out loud you really are consolidating it um, it's easier to remember things once you've tried to explain them out. Uh, unfortunately, we are not in the lab and you're not going to have your lab partners with you. What I'd like you to do now is to go out into the house, go go find you, uh, your parents or your brother or sister or um, maybe even a pet or over the fence to a neighbour. And I'd like you to tell them what the five uses of glucose are. Tell them. Uh, we've just mentioned them. As much detail as you possibly can can you remember the five once you get back i'll go through uh, the answers okay hopefully you've just had a good conversation um, about plants and the uses of glucose and sugars if you can remember it is respiration starch lipids cellulose and amino acids for proteins those are the five you do need to remember these it might just be a case of uh rote learning them just write write them out lots of times and um test yourself
Okay, a little bit more on respiration. Respiration is a chemical reaction. It occurs in mitochondria inside plant cells. It uses up glucose to get energy for life processes. So before we talked about photosynthesis needing light. It needs light because it is an endothermic reaction. Respiration, on the other hand, is what we call an exothermic reaction. This gives out energy when the reaction happens. Okay, So it's an exothermic reaction and therefore does not need light. So respiration can happen in the night when it's dark because it makes energy. And that's the point. It can happen at any time of day as long as there is enough glucose and oxygen available. OK, what is one similarity between photosynthesis and respiration? Have a read of those boxes, pause the video, have, a, have an answer. And when you unpause it, we'll go through uh, what the correct one is. OK, one similarity between photosynthesis and respiration. They're both chemical reactions that happen inside the cell. Neither can work in the dark. Well, that's not true because um, respiration can, but photosynthesis can't. They both capture energy. Um, I would say that's more photosynthesis capturing the energy, whereas um, respiration is releasing the energy. D, plants and animals do both. Only plants do photosynthesis, animals do not. And so the last one is, is true, it is a similarity. They are both chemical reactions and they happen inside the cells. Writing time. Please, can you make sure that you're using full sentences and paragraph format for your answers? How do plants transport nutrients is your driving question. Make sure that's at the top of your page and then work your way through these questions. Describe, explain, use and com compare. Um, starting with describe, describe how glucose is made. That's just outlining the photosynthesis um, uh, process. The second question, explain. Can you explain what glucose is used for in the plant? So remember what they are, but also add more detail there. It's not just a memory game, but rather, can you explain how they're used? Explain how glucose is used in protein synthesis. So in, a, in more detail, talk about how are proteins made. And finally, can you explain the relationship between photosynthesis and respiration in plants in relation to day and night? The last one's a little bit tricky. You might need to reread that question. Um, give yourself between 10 and 15 minutes on this. Start at the top, work your way down. Um, when you come back, we'll, we'll go through these and mark these. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Keywords are at the bottom. Good luck. Okay, well done on that. Let's have a look. Uh, make sure you've got your green pen or maybe a different coloured pen so you can mark your answers Every time you get something correct, give it a tick. But if you're missing any details or you've got something wrong, I would like you to correct it. Please pause the video as we go along, um, if I'm going too quickly. Glucose is one of the products of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that takes place in the chloroplasts of some plant cells, especially those in the palisade mesophyll of leaves. The reactants are carbon dioxide and water, which produces glucose and oxygen. This is how glucose is made. Glucose is a simple sugar. Glucose can be used for respiration. This is a chemical reaction that occurs in the mitochondria of the cells to get energy. Many glucose molecules can be joined together to make starch, which is an insoluble storage of carbohydrates. It can also be made into lipids, which are fats and oils, for storage in seeds. Many glucose molecules can be added together to make cellulose for building cell walls, and with nitrates can be used to make amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. OK, more on um, protein synthesis. Proteins are made from amino acids, which are made from glucose. So photosynthesis in the leaves produces glucose. Nitrates, which are compounds containing nitrogen, are absorbed from the soil. The nitrates and the glucose molecules react together to make amino acids. And then many amino acids are joined together to make proteins. And then finally, how, um, what, I suppose, what the similarities and differences and how is that linked to the day and night cycle? Well, plants need to undergo both photosynthesis and respiration. That's important to remember. They need both. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that happens in the chloroplasts of cells. 
Photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction, which means it requires energy. The point of photosynthesis is to trap energy from the sun as useful chemical energy in the glucose. Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide, water and light to work. This means that photosynthesis can only happen in the daytime. Because it is an endothermic reaction, it needs light. Respiration is a chemical reaction that happens in the mitochondria of cells. Respiration is an exothermic reaction, which means it produces energy. The point of respiration is to release the chemical energy stored in glucose. It only requires glucose and oxygen. This means that respiration can happen at any time of day. It does not need light. It just needs oxygen and glucose. There we are. So respiration at any time. Photosynthesis only when there is light out. OK, happy? <laughs> Good. Well done uh, on this unit. This is the last, last thing to do really for this unit. Please can you make sure you've got your Today I've Achieved sentence for this lesson. Um, fill in this gap here using describe, explain, use or combine depending on what you've achieved and um, you know that you can achieve that because you could either describe how glucose is made, explain what glucose is used for in the plant, explain how glucose is used in protein synthesis or explain the relationships between photosynthesis and respiration in relation to day and night. Pause the video and write this sentence now please. OK, I'm really proud of um, everybody who stuck with all these lessons. Um, it's not an easy topic, is it? Especially some of those later lessons. Loads and loads and loads of new key terminology, lots, lots of new key words. Uh, and it does take time to get used to those. Um, by all means, feel free to go back over, rewatch some of those videos if there are any points that you find difficult. Um, and for always on this last quiz, uh, sorry, this last lesson there is a show my homework quiz don't forget the 10 questions please can you do those after you have uh finished this lesson which hopefully pretty much all of you have um yeah seriously well done everybody and i'll see you next time